again guys this is going to be the second part of the video it'll be mostly concerned with her face and it's a little bit long because I was not entirely sure what I was doing but I think you'll find the process informative anyway there are others I feel like you have better tutorials on facial wigs than I do but I think that this will be a good start and I will also link to those other ones so you can get as much help as you need in mine I'm mostly focused on matching the facial structure of a real human being uh, mostly the cheek mound the lips and the eye socket those are important to my character because she has such round cheeks such round lips like she's a very round character so that's important to me especially if you're not just covering with materials you actually want to make like light her dynamically you'll want to make sure that she has three dimensionality to her so I've sort of modeled the polys to match the shape and muscle structure of a real face, especially around the lips, where it kind of tucks into the cheek mound, which is especially round, and then the cheekbones kind of curve into the eye sockets in the forehead. Kind of it, it pushes out from that. If you feel your own face while you're modeling, which is a little bit weird, but you know, we're artists, it's cool you can start to understand more how this facial rig will work because the closer you get to real life, the easier it will be to animate it. Here I am trying to define the lips a little bit more, always keeping the vert count low, always keeping polys as low as I can while maintaining some type of realism. And here I'm trying to define the nose. I struggle a little bit with making her face childish and cute but also relatively high poly it's something you'll notice me fidget with throughout the whole video but if you just keep working it you will get there it's all a matter of patience and observation so much observation and here I am just trying to give her face a little bit more roundness this video is going a little bit fast you can always go into the YouTube settings and half the video, half the speed of the video. Here I am, I'm giving her chin, the under part of her chin a little bit more roundness. I'm avoiding doing the eyes until last just because they're a more complex structure. And I just wanna make sure her whole face is the right shape before I start that. And here I am, I'm like, I'm beginning. I didn't like what I just did there, obviously. Just pushing and pulling. I think the most important part of creating a face that's realistic is really the, the bend of the cheek connecting to the eyes, to the chin. It, there's a lot of three-dimensionality in that whole area with the, where the cheek connects to things. And the more three-dimensionality you can get in the curve of the lips and in the cur and like the nose bridge and the nostril flaps, like that bend is really important. Now I'm not entirely modeling based off the facial muscle muscles, shame on me, but I think that for a low poly model this will do. You'll see around her mouth I have a ring of verts. That will help it with facial animation. It's kind of like the laugh lines. The nose is a really complicated structure and I struggled with it a little bit in this video, but You'll see I get it eventually. The main thing to remember is that there's essentially one plane connecting the like the septum to your lips. Here I am, I'm making the model for the eye. I have watched a lot of tutorials in the past that have done a similar thing and I, I just think it's a good idea. It's sort of like creating a mask in that 
you want to create a ring of polys around the eye and then connect it to the face. I've noticed that creating a ring around things creates a more sound structure. And always try and keep your polys four-sided if you can. It creates some weird problems in some other softwares if you don't. Once you've created this ring around the eyes, which will help with animating the eyelids, you can start to match it up to your original image while all, like always moving it around to make sure you have that three-dimensional structure. You can see I'm moving it back in space, looking at the side profile, and then moving it around in the front. Winding the nose a little bit, rounding out the cheeks. You, it, it really is important to keep moving it around because her, her head looks really bad from certain angles and you just don't want that to happen in the final model, so always move it around, always check it from every angle. spend a lot of time fixing these eyes. This is the part with the philtrum and the nose and the lips. This part is pretty important. I The easiest way I've found is to just cut out a piece for the nostril and push it right in and then darken the nostril. I feel like that's the simplest way to create a nose. There are lots of ways and noses are hard, much harder than I anticipated, but this seems to be the easiest. Just cut that plane right in half and then extrude in and adjust the nostrils to kind of match what you want the nostrils to look like in the rendered view. And here I am coloring the nose because that's kind of my style. I, I think it's nice when you're coloring with materials because it's kind of hard to tell what's going on if you don't give something a silhouette. Here I'm just giving the nostril a little bit more definition by cutting in a little bit, moving around some edges, mostly paying attention to the silhouette of the nostril, but also the, sh the shape of the model, shape of the nose. And here I'm giving it a little shiny, because who doesn't love the shiny? Let's be real. Here I'm kind of redefining the shape of that part above the lips. You just want to be sure you have that ring, that circular structure around the lips, that mot like that. Like if you have seen an old person's face, they have that that wrinkle above their lip, and that's kind of the laugh line. That's very important for rigging facial structures. I the one thing about this is that she will not be able to open her mouth. I did not make teeth or a mouth that can talk. That might be another time, but for just smiling purposes, this should be it. This should be fine. Hopefully my facial fiddling will give you guys a chance to catch up. Here I am extruding in the eyelids. This will be this will give the character a lot of three-dimensionality. You can see that I've extruded in again to give the um, pink part of the eye, the eyelid. And here I did something kind of dumb. I'm making the eyeball and I'm putting it in. You should just leave it a circle. I tried to do something low poly and I, I think that you should just use a circle if you're going to be sculpting eyes. I would not recommend changing the number of verts but this is what I did. <laughs> so here I am trying to fit the eyeballs into the model. This will be a lot easier when you're trying, if you want to animate her eyes actually moving instead of just being, you know, cut onto her face and rigid, this should be a lot more expressive. It's still a similar way to I, the way I modeled the first model. It's just with this one, I'm drawing the materials onto the eyeball which will have movement inside of the eyelids. So right now I'm really just concentrating on how to fix 
this spherical object so that there aren't a lot of holes that you can't really see into it. <laughs> this is probably my favorite part. She looks like a goat, some kind of like demon goat eyes. Maybe that's your thing. It's not mine. <laughs> Gotta make sure that her animation will work in the future and that you aren't gonna have birds that stick out. So I do tests before I rig about how her eyes motion will rotate for like I will rotate on the Z to make sure that when I rotate in the future to work. Just make sure that you've tested your model pretty well before you you start rigging. And here I am doing a similar thing to my first tutorial series where I colored the eyelashes with materials and I kind of cut it in. It's similar but a little bit more complex. And here I am just checking it from all sides. I'm noticing there are some holes and I just want to make sure that she is as solid as she can be before I start rigging and animating her. And this is again why I say the spherical object was better. I thought that it would be a good idea to try doing a low poly sphere and it just didn't do it. But in the end I end up figuring out kind of how to get her people to look like a circle and how to kind of fill in those gaps. So it ends up working out. but. And I'm always looking in the rendered view just to make sure that she still looks good. She still looks like like a low poly cute character that doesn't have a bunch of weird verts out of place. It's always important. Checking again to make sure that her eyes rotate normally. And then giving her a little bit cosmetic a little bit of cosmetic appearance giving her more full lashes, giving some three-dimensionality to those shapes. Similar to the way I did it in my first tutorial, where you just extrude the lash out. Here I'm just giving her lips a little bit more definition, kind of experimenting with what I like. I'll also at, like end up changing the size of her eyes and a couple of things just to give her more of a childish appearance. She's getting there, but she's not quite right. Here I'm just making sure that the three-dimensionality of her eyelids is sort of intact and that little pink bit in the inside of the eye is pretty important, at least in my opinion. Maybe it's not, <laughs> but I think it is. And here I'm giving her her red cheeks. Another thing I very stylistically like to do. I love red cheeks. I think they're the cutest thing ever. So, And now I'm just kind of making sure that her face maintains the roundness even when I draw that on. Because a lot of times when you draw your shapes and materials, it can really mess up your vert structure. So you want to be careful that you do not mess it up. You want to make sure that you don't have any not clipped center verts. That's sort of a problem in Unity as well. I can I kind of just check by trying to pull them apart, and if they come apart, I just merge them together. I make sure clipping is on most of the time, so Blender does that for me. And here I decide to make the eyes just a little bit bigger, just more fitting, just just closer in accuracy to the original. Just kind of fixing the ears. <laughs> Testing her ability to smile. Alright. In the next video, I'll be working on the clothes and the body. So, I'll see you there.